Um, it's time for the San Francisco Giants. And um, last year wasn't great for y'all. You were the definition of mediocre. You went 81 and 81. Uh, it was a really injury plague season. There wasn't a lot of like health to the team. And Carlos Rodon had a scion caliber season, though. Hey, how about that? Um, I I would agree with you on the, the injury plague season. I don't know how how things like this happen. You know, you you win 107 games, you break the all time Giants record for a single season. You you take down the Dodgers and then lose to the Dodgers the next week, but that's fine because they ended up losing later. That's okay. Um, I don't know how a run like that ends with the next season going 81 and 81. The, there was a lot that went wrong, and I think. The main problem was the way that this team is run. There's a lot of platoon bats. There's a lot of, you know, pitching changes. There's a lot of things that are, you know, relying on different guys. So it, I feel like it's a lot less reliant on stars. And that's kind of the thing about this team. Um, the entire bullpen disappeared last year. That was the problem. That that was our main problem. Along with injuries on the offensive side of things, the entire bullpen was gone. There was not really a good side other than Camilo Duvall in that bullpen that really stood out. Um, and I'm not sure if that's just a one-season wonder from – like six or seven guys in that bullpen, or if it was just a very bad season for six or seven guys, it, it was definitely an anomaly to see such a good bullpen turn into a weaker, a weak point for this team. I mean, I think there's more of the team that you're neglecting didn't succeed over the team OPS of 705. That's for 23rd right. MLB. Um, it's it just, it didn't work. And the issue there is also where some teams will like the Rays will purchase like both young and veteran the giants pretty much solely went veteran and that can bite you in the butt when veterans kind of tend to crumble a little bit easier yeah and i i'm always like let's trust farhan you know farhan's got a plan but i i'm not sure it's just so weird when something clicks so well and it wasn't and, and brad you you always say that it's like this mickey mouse run but like a, a very telltale sign of dominance is, is run differential. And, and we had like a very good run differential, like tied with the, with the Dodgers that season. Like, it wasn't just like, you know, like when you, or when you usually overachieve your run differentials, like zero, you know, like a team that like overachieves, you win a bunch of games that you shouldn't have won, but the, the giants were a, were just a powerhouse that season. And I think that was helped by the fact that we had a healthy Descalfani. We had a healthy Gosman and he's still on the team. We had Bosch to Posey. You know, we had, we had breakout season, re breakout seasons from Brandon Belt and Brandon Crawford. Everyone seemed to hit their peak at the same time. And that, that kind of all fell apart this season. And I think it slightly because of injury, slightly because of age. Um, but I, I see, I see 2021 as, the best case scenario. And I see 2022 as one of the worst case scenarios for the giants. Yeah. So says, where does, do, you go ahead. I get at it. Um, so let's talk about some of the players they lost. They lost Shelby Miller, Brandon Bell. Uh, he went out to Toronto. Uh, I still dislike that move. Uh, Carlos Rodon has to New York and Evan Longoria. We talked about him in Arizona, but they got Carlos Correa for about seven days. Uh, and then he decided to go to New York and then went to, mm-hmm. Uh, I do. Um, and then, but they re-signed Jock Peterson, uh, signed Mitch Hanniger, Ross Stripling, Sean Manaya, Taylor Rogers, Michael Conforto, Luke Jackson, and then Arson Judge. Why would you add that in the list? Oh. Why is that in the list? How is that in the list? Who <laughs> put that there? How did that get in the list? Wait, wait, wait. no, no. Um, this this was a the Giants. You know, we stumbled, we fell flat on our face. <laughs> But, you know, we got up off the mat. You signed Conforto, you signed Rodgers, you signed Hanniger. And, okay, Jock Peterson is extremely overpriced. We, we signed him for way too much, but it's okay because he's good. But the way the way that we recovered this offseason, I think that makes us one of the offseason winners. You you compare us to the other ball clubs in the, around the league, there, it's, it's about expectations. The expectation was we would have the greatest offseason of all time. We didn't do that. Um, but we went out and got a lot more players than a lot of other teams. And I think we did address a lot of different positions. We, we, so, add, we addressed the depth. So I can't say – you can't say you're an off-season winner when your expectations heading into the off-season was signing guys like Conforto and Sean Manaya and re-signing Jack Peterson and then Aaron Judge or Carlos Correa. You yeah, instead – I mean, the list, okay, here's know. the thing. And, they did sign Carlos Correa, and they did fair. sign Arson Judge. It's all going to look good when Arson Judge bets 150 this season and, and gets DFA'd at the deadline. 
or something. I, and and Carlos I, Correa just his leg just falls off <laughs> midseason. And and it's gonna look so smart. And the Giants are going to look like the best team in the league. And by that point, this is a Joey Votto prediction. The Giants are going to be like 150 and, and zero. Uh. <laughs> so I will say I, I like their offseason. If if there was zero expectations, like you were expecting the Giants to make next to no moves, it's a good offseason. It's, it's a great offseason. They went out. They signed some outfield pieces. They re-signed Jock Peterson, got some bullpen depth, and got uh got some starting pitching. Like It's a good, it's a good offseason. It's just your expectations were Aaron Judge or Carlos Correa, and you didn't you didn't do that. You got Arson Judge for seven minutes. Yeah, and I, I feel like I feel like with the whole Aaron Judge fiasco, like he he was loyal this whole time. I think I I think from day one he really did want to be on the Yankees. He didn't he didn't he wanted his legacy more than money. Yeah, I don't think there was ever a chance he would ever go to the Giants. I think he was just visiting us. Like and and, and the whole the whole reason was like the Giants fumbled Aaron Judge was because John freaking Heyman <laughs> tweeted out saying we had him. And if he didn't do that, we'd honestly – no one would be saying we fumbled him because he was supposed to be loyal to the Yankees. It was supposed to happen. The, the Giants were in that conversation, but we were not supposed to get Aaron Judge this offseason. He was supposed to go back to the Yankees. It, it, it's like the, the fumbles – the fumble was because of John Heyman and his, his, tw- his really fast fingers that weren't able to spell correctly. That's my reasoning. Brad, what do you think about that? Um, I would have liked to see them sign an infielder at all. Yeah. Like they didn't. Nice. They didn't sign, they didn't yeah. sign a single <laughs> infielder. And that's the weakness oh, of this man. team is the dog crap infield. You got Brendan Crawford is just starting shortstop. You, you got J.D. Davis at first base. Like, eh, yeah, you had J.D. Tyro Davis Estrada. was actually – J.D. Davis was actually fairly good for that second half of the season. I – Here's the thing. This is this is this entire team is platoon guys. There is no no one that stands out as like a superstar or even a star. Um, I mean, but the thing is, the bench in the lineup is pretty interchangeable because of that reason. You know, it, it's like you can sub in Lamont Wade at first. You can sub in the outfield. Slater is the platoon guy. He is very effective anywhere in the outfield, wherever you put him. Wilmer Flores, another guy, just plays the entire infield. Roberto Perez as our backup cat. Are the catcher situation is not very good. I, I I do not like Joey Bart, but based on the the fact that the Giants just keep picking catchers every single draft, I don't know why we keep pitching keep picking catchers. Um, we have a lot of depth at this position in the minors. It's just none of them are uh, showing out yet. I'm a little bit worried about that, but um, th- there is a couple things to be worried about on this team. Um, but you do have a lot of these players that were difference makers on the 2021 roster coming back from injuries that, that stopped their 2022 season. So I am a bit hopeful that, you know, it starts to turn around this season and we reach not the 107 win mark, which was monumental, but m- more of like a reasonable area between 500 and a, a couple of games above 500, obviously is what I'm saying. Um, I'll, I'll bring us through the rotation. I think I think this rotation is slightly worse than the 2021 and 2022 rosters. Um, we got Logan Webb leading the uh, leading the charge here. Alex Cobb, who I think might have a bounce back season. I think he's lined up to have a bit of a bounce back. A couple uh, expected stats say uh, that he deserves to be uh, a little bit better than stats gave him. Uh, Ross Stripling. Brad, you like Ross Stripling. Um, Chicken strips. Yep. Alex Wood. We got two Alexes on the team, both scrappy dudes that aren't necessarily stars. I'm pretty high on Sean Manaya. However, he's not looked very good in spring training. I think he's got a lot of potential, and I hope the Giants can kind of help him uh, develop uh, his mechanics along so that he doesn't get shelled. Um, and I'm a little interested that that Desclafani made it to the bullpen, and he's not a starter. I don't know if he, we're going to run a six-man to start the year or if he's going to work his way up uh, or if he's on limited innings. I'm not really sure about that right now. Um, but how are we feeling about this rotation? I, it's not the best thing, but I think it's within that top – like 16 range top 15 range well I, I mean the 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 Giants do a good job with pitchers like you saw Carlos Rodon kind of he came in he had a good 2021 came to the Giants had a better 2022 and then got a giant deal from the Yankees and so uh, he had one bad outing Tom Woo! um so obviously they're going like the pitching staff's gonna be somewhat decent and honestly it, it doesn't on paper it doesn't look terrible I know Brad's not super high on Logan Webb, um, but he loves Ross Stripling. Sean Manaya needs to kind of have a bounce back or not a bounce, like needs to have a somewhat decent season or else he's probably 
uh, one foot out the door. Yeah, and I think I mean obviously if one of these guys doesn't perform, there's a guy with his uh with his foot in the door, uh who I'm excited to watch pitch. I just need to watch Kyle Harris, and we'll talk about him more later. But that is another guy that could take over the four or five spot in this rotation. Um, but let's go ahead and move on to the bullpen. I like this. Oh, Brad, go ahead. Speak. Speak on the rotation. Speak. Go. Uh, I feel like last year we were supposed to have a Logan Webb breakout. It didn't. It wasn't a bad season by any means, but I think he kind of just solidified himself as like a number two on most good teams. Which, yeah, I feel like I feel like, fine. Yeah, I feel like after his performance in the uh, NLDS against the Do- the Dodgers, he was so good that series. Uh, that was kind of how we why we all expected him to have this breakout. He's kind of a ground ball pitcher, not necessarily a power guy. Um, but I I think there is this potential for him to you know be a guy that lasts a long time out there, like Sandy Alcantara. Um. I, I, he's not necessarily like this superstar, um, but I think he does get a lot of ground balls and he, what he does do is he eats a lot of innings. He pitched 192 last season. I think that's going to be very valuable to this team. Yeah. And Alex Wood, by no stretch of the imagination was good last year. He was not great. Um, Ross Stripling was actually yeah. one of the most productive Toronto pitchers outside of, you know, Gossman and Manoa. Um, he was effectively the three starter. Uh, he was he was pretty good last year, and like he's been an all star with the Dodgers before. He struggled through twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one, but again, the Giants can develop pitching and maintain pitching, and I think he'll be fine there. Yeah, and I think uh, moving on to the bullpen, obviously we got who I think might be the reliever of the year. He's going to be in that conversation, Camilo Duvall. He is he is he's that guy. I think he's proved it now for two years. Pretty consistent coming out of the bullpen. And then you got the Rogers brothers. You got Taylor and Tyler. Um, Tyler Rogers scares me so much. He is so scary to watch. I mean, he pitches so slow and he gets absolutely shelled sometimes. I don't know how he was so good in 2021. I'm very critical on my guys, by the way. Um, but I just I, I see a potential return to form next season. I think um Taylor Rogers it has more potential than Tyler, obviously, being a left-handed pitcher in this bullpen. Um and I think that the Giants have the tools to kind of progress him forward as well. Uh, as if, I mean, the, the Brewers did too, but I think the Giants are even better in that pitching department. Uh, they got John Brevia and Jacob Junis. Those two guys were stars in 2021. They were good in 2021. Last year, saw some regression. Uh, I got Sam Long, Scott Alexander. And then right now on the IL is Luke Jackson, but he'll be coming back midseason, I believe. Um he he's going to be good in this bullpen. Uh, was good on the Braves, so I mean, that's another guy that we can be using that bullpen. There's about four or five guys that are, I I feel confident bringing into the game. Um, I think this makes them a top ten bullpen in baseball. I and, and and top ten is I think I think they're in that bottom two in that top ten list, but they're in the top ten. Brad, what do you think? I'm gonna have to. I, I'm gonna go through before opening day, and I'm gonna look and like rank everything. I feel like they're more of an 11 to 15, in all honesty. Like, outside of Doval, it's like you, you could have Taylor Rogers as the setup man, but there's just, I don't know. If they perform how they did last year, it's a god-awful bullpen. Absolutely. And I worry about injuries with this bullpen because you don't really know what they have past this. Yeah, I mean – I mean, at this point, it's such an anomaly. The last season, I say that a million times, but like, you, you, I don't know what to expect from this bullpen. They could be the 2021 form and win, and be the difference maker in these games and end up winning us another 20 games, or they could be what they were last year and we'd end up doing 500 again. And it's just, I don't know what to expect from this bullpen. There's not much that analytics can even tell you because their analytics were just falling off the face of the bill. Like they just fell off last season, and I don't know how they're going to bounce back from that this season. Um, so, so let's head, let's head over into their, their lineup. They got GD Davis at first, Tyro Estrada at second, Jock Peterson at DH, Mitch Hanniger at right field, Mike Estremski out in center, Michael Conforto on left, David VR at third base, Brandon Crawford at shortstop and Joey behind the dish. The top six are pretty good. It's fine. Yeah. I mean, so Obviously, Brandon Crawford dealing with some injuries, but I think we're all forgetting that he batted 300 and hit like uh, like 20 something home runs, and while also having a Gold Glove defensive season. Um, I mean, he's, not gonna, he's never going to do that again. Um, but 
Uh, it's also I, 36 right now. Yeah, there, there's a lot of old people in this league dominating right now. Trust me. It's it's 36 year old shortstop. No, um, haters out the door. Uh, Brennan Crawford, I think, will have a some sort of bounce back. I think the reason that he was struggling last year was obviously because injury, and that that injury kind of kept him off the field, especially with consistency. I think getting into a groove is important as a player. So I think he might be one of those difference makers. I don't think he's going to be one of the best bats in the lineup by any means, but I, his 2021 was arguably one of the best seasons. Th- th- actually, not arguably the best season of his career. And if he can do something like that again, it would definitely be a difference maker for this team. And I think the one through six is fairly underrated. I think Michael Conforto has the chance to come back and be the Michael Conforto he was his whole career because he, as I looked back, was actually like an all-star level player his entire career. He's very good at baseball. I don't know how he didn't get signed last year. Um, and then you got Mitch Hanniger, another guy. Yeah, uh, th- th- there's a lot of injury concern with, with the guys we signed. I'm concerned about Mitch Hanniger and Michael Conforto making it a whole full season, but they both have the tools to be all-stars this season. Um, I think you talk about 2022 being the anomaly. I think you have the wrong year there. I think you have 2021 should be the anomaly. I'd like to reference this for a minute. They're winning percentages by year from 2017 went to 395, 451, 475, 483, 660, and 500. I feel like nope. we're just back along like their progression. Well, I mean, there also was management change in the year that we um we had that 660. So there, there's a lot of differences that 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 kind of went into that season and i feel like not necessarily that that 660 is the new norm but being a better team is the new norm you know going back on the years before that we were under bad management well bruce bochy was great but like it was the end of his career as at least um and nothing was really clicking i guess and says what you got you're you're just, I just say something. i just disagree with like like brad makes a fair point you had one really good season and now you're back on track of being mediocre again like like yeah you had all that managerial and all the front office switching and stuff like that but like it, it was it was you won in what'd you win you won in was it 12 12 it was 10 12 and 14 yeah and then you've kind of been mediocre to pretty good since then like you made the playoffs in 2015 and 2016. Yeah, but you sucked and you lost. You didn't make it on 15. Uh, um, but like, I oh, mean, wait, I, yeah, I, sorry. Brad's Brad Brad brings up a fair point. In the last five six years, you have not been really. The Giants haven't been like the epitome of of winning that it feels like you're trying to hype them up to be, which is fine. I mean, like it's your it's your team. That's what you're supposed to do. But like, you have to look at it as like. Yeah, they had a very, very good 2021. That was it was incredible. It was an incredible run. But now they're kind of back down to earth again. I, think I mean, it's the moves you make to get there too. Right, go ahead. That was that was the hundredth percentile of everything going right. Last year was more of that, the twenty-fifth percentile, like the thirtieth percentile. But the thing is, you are once again counting on a lineup of injury plagued players. Like JD Davis has never consistently been good. Tyro Estrada's young. There's potential there. Peterson kind of cannot hit left-handed pitching. He was a little bit better last year. Um, Hanager barely played, and he's barely played besides 2021. Yastrzemski kind of – he's kind of showed that 2020 was a bit of an outlier. He was good in 2021, but he was not at the same pace. Michael Conforto, very good, hasn't played really in two years. And then you kind of fall off a cliff. Uh, keep hating on Brandon Crawford, baby. I'm telling you. Mike Yastrzemski is going to put up an 850 OPS. He's going to have a bounce back season offensively. He's already one of the better defensive center fielders out there. What says? So, so when we talk about, we talk about floor and ceilings, right? Like this is in the 2021. Biggest league, I think. And yeah, I probably can agree with that. Maybe not the biggest, but it's definitely like top five biggest, I would say. Um, but like 2021 um, was like, that was the ceiling. Like you somehow broke the ceiling for for a, a for a team, right? Hell yeah! And and looking at like looking at this team, like as as constructed right now, you have holes that you need. To fill. Um, and I, I think you have you have good you have good management, and I think you you have the ability to, but I don't. I just 
I'm I just I I'm worried about their future your the future of the Giants more than anything else. Like we oh, talked yeah. about yeah, it. Future, future we talked bad. about it last year and we all agreed that they should probably have traded at the deadline to try and kind of yeah. reset the clock and try and not even reset but kind of like retool and they didn't do that. And now you're looking at a bunch of injury injured players and at best you're third in the West. Yeah, and honestly, which is why another thing why the um why the volatility is so high. If the season's not going well, I think there's going to be a fire sale. I think there's going there without a doubt will be a sale of a lot of players on our team. Um, because after the season or after I think we have about two or three more seasons with this core, offensively at least. Um what even is the core? Like Peterson, Peterson, Mitch Hanager, and Conforto. Yastrzemski, Conforto. Yeah. Thing. Like that was your core, core in your good year. The core, the core in our good year was a bunch of nobodies. There was no core. Yeah. Everyone was good. Everyone on the team was good. There was no core because everyone was the core. The Giants just became one and meshed it. <laughs> so realistically, the young talent on this team is Kyle Harrison. Yeah, you can say Tyra Estrada maybe and Camilo Doval. The rest of them, I mean, Logan Webb is going to reach free agency before we even end this 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 attempt at a, at a, at a run here. Um. So I I don't see why if the Giants are out of contention at the deadline that they don't sell. I mean that they do I mean, sell. So we, you know what I'm saying like, last year too, and they didn't sell. No, that that would that makes no sense because no coming off a 107 win season and then selling the next season that's that's Nats. Sorry. Um. Ha- Ah, I mean, no, they were actually bad in 2020 and then sold in 2020. Oh, yeah, but like, true. yeah, I mean, you literally you were completely out of contention. There was there was no way, and you, you definitely could have tried and flip Rodon for something. And oh, yeah, held on to Rodon and let him. I'm not the through. GM, I told you to do I'm I saying, I'm saying you as the Giants as a whole, yeah. I, yeah, I think, I think this season, I mean, Stevs, like you mentioned, 2020 was a bad season for the Nats, 2021 was a um. A bit of a comeback season. They were in that range, and then Kyle Schwarber got hurt, and then everything fell fell apart. Uh, so I think Schwarber fell, and then Brad Hand sucks. I think I think this is, I I think this same pattern might happen to the Giants. You know, karma. They say karma is a. I can't say it on the podcast, but karma does some things to you. And I made fun of Stevs so many times about this, and it's gonna happen to me too. But with that being said, their ceiling is not 107 wins, but their ceiling is very high. I'm telling you, their ceiling is very high. You can, you can, on paper, what's the, what's the ceiling? Give me, no, no. Give me, give me your number. What's your ceiling? Their ceiling is like 92 games. I'm not even kidding. If ever, if, if, if they get the hundredth percentile from this, this, this squad steps, if it steps, look at me and tell me if in 2021, if you saw this giants roster in 2021, you would have told me that they would have won 107 games. You would have told me they won 80 games. They, they were, everything went right. In 2021, I, think, I if you said 90 games, I would have been like, I mean, 90, on their best yeah, 90, day, yeah. But yeah. I, in 2023, 90 is stretching it. Brad. The thing is, right, like you could reasonably get a good season from every starting pitcher. You could reasonably get a solid season from most of the bullpen arms. And you could reasonably get a pretty good season from most of the bats, Right. And if you do that, you have to compete with the Dodgers and Padres. You got to compete with the AL East, the AL West, and the and the NL East. Is that team going to steal wins from the Dodgers, the Padres, the Braves, the Phillies, the Mets, the Yankees, the Blue? Like that's the thing. Yes. I don't think this team steals those wins. And for that reason, I, mean, I say it's more of an eighty-eight to ninety win ceiling. Um, well, we talk about ceilings with these teams, right? And we, we were like, if everything goes right, if everything goes right, you know, but it's highly unlikely. But the thing is the, the difference between this team and every other team in baseball is that no other team has reached the ceiling like we did. And that, that proves that we can do it and that it can happen again. You know what I'm saying? Stevs, Stevs you got it's, super angry when I said that. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's not the same team though. They're older. They're more injured. Like, like this team is very injury prone. If everything goes right, 86 to 88 wins would be my ceiling for them. Like, let's, get I, I into it. let's get into it. I'm, I just I'm don't, so ready. I don't see it. You know, Stevs, lead us off. Just no, you lead us off. It's your team. 
fair. That's fair. The San Francisco Giants will go <clears throat> 89 and 73 this season. And that is there that is one that is that is high. Um but I am expecting things to work out this season. And I will say under this, I wrote extremely high volatility. This could go very wrong. Um, so yes, it could go very wrong, but there, there's no bias. This is, this is, this is me looking through the lens of an unbiased sports fan. Um, team MVP. I got Michael Conforto. I feel like Michael Conforto will have a breakout season. I think he will break out and be the Michael Conforto. He's been his whole career. Most important player, Mitch Hanniger. He has to be healthy this season. Um, when he's on the field, he's hitting like 35 home runs a season. He will be very good if he's on the field this season. Just need him to stay healthy. Uh, as for Cy Young, I have Camilo Doval. I think he's going to win the reliever of the year award. No bias there. And then for the breakout, I think a, a I think a spot in that starting five rotation will open up midseason. And I think Kyle Harrison will take that advantage of that. And he will be the breakout player for the Giants. Um, oh I had them going 83 and 79. So they're better. They're better than last year. Um, I definitely think they made the right moves. Uh, not all the right moves, but they made some good moves in the offseason. They, they're a better team than they were last year. Again, injuries are a concern. MVP, I have Jock Peterson. He needs to learn how to hit lefty pitching, but um, he's really kind of the Giants' best player. Uh, Cy Young, Logan Webb. Breakout, Michael Conforto. I'm really excited to see him play this year. Um I, I honestly don't have a most important player on this team. I would say like just health in general or like the starting rotation to play to their ceiling. Um or or and like or maybe like the development of Sean Manaya to have him come back. Um because if he can, then at least you have a trade piece at the deadline. So w- w- which one? Um, I don't I don't know. I'm uh, let's go with Sean Manaya because he's the only actual player. That's valid. And and I'm ready for Brad. You know, I, I'm I'm very curious what you got here, Brad. I also have wise. them at 83 and no! 79. There's just you look over the past couple of seasons, right? And teams that have succeeded. The Giants had a star in 2021. They had two of them. They had Buster Posey and Brandon Crawford. Neither of them are one's retired and one's not the same anymore. Brandon Crawford was somehow fantastic in 2021, and he's not that anymore. They don't have a star anymore. They really don't, and that hurts them. I think their MVP is Jock Peterson's bat. There's a reason I specified the bat, because uh, that glove is god-awful. Um, with their Cy Young, I could go a lot of ways with this, but I'm gonna, I'll am gonna, i take the long ball, and I'm going to go with Kyle Harrison. I think he's going to, like, Zoom through AAA pretty quickly, right? And I think he's just gonna he's gonna get called up. And we didn't really get to talk about his profile. Uh, we were busy bickering about the Giants because we do that a good amount. Uh, Kyle Harrison is a great strikeout pitcher. He's got a really high walk rate, and he doesn't know what a ground ball is. But his fastball has the potential to be the best fastball in baseball. Like given its release spot and the shape on it, it could easily be the best pitch in baseball. Uh, and that's a good thing you want a starting pitcher to have. Um, I think their most important piece, though, is their bullpen. And because the bullpen falters, the late game falters, and the team falls apart again. Yeah, and more importantly for the Giants than other teams, because Gabe Kapler loves calling to the bullpen. He loves using as many changes as possible during a game. So I really think that, you know, everyone's going to have to – someone's going to have to step up. I think they got some pieces that are able to do that. So I'm hoping that it works out for him. I, I'm just ready to watch the season. I, I'm going to watch so many Giants games this season. I don't, I, I'm just, I, I'm anticipating like a very good season from them, but I'm also prepared for a, uh, a disappointing season as well. The volatility is so high. You want to get into that, Brad? What's their floor? What do you got for the floor? I'm at 75 and 87. But that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like about right. they don't succeed. They're injured and they sell at the deadline and the Diamondbacks are solid. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that makes sense. But their ceiling, we already talked about this. We already hinted around. Brad, what do you what'd you have them at? 90 and 72. Steve? I would have them at around 88 wins. Uh for my ceiling I have at 135, but no, guys, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It, it was it was like 92, 93, but who who knows, man? You know, I I I have learned not to doubt this team anymore. 
well, I do doubt them a lot sometimes, but you know, um, it's just what a weird team, man. I love the Giants, though. I'm I'm ready to watch the season. All right, thank you all for listening to the Four A Baseball Podcast. The San Francisco Giants and Arizona Diamondbacks will be two teams we definitely need to watch during 2021. Thank you for joining us for all four episodes this week. If you have, if you haven't, go go uh, go check those ones out. They're pretty good ones. Uh, Dodgers and Padres will be the next episode we release. That'll kick off our week next week. If you want to interact with us at all, all social media links will be in the description below. Thank you for listening to the 4A Baseball Podcast. We will see you all next time. Peace.